Hi, I'm Mark Locks, Extension Weed Scientist at The Ohio State University. I'm standing in one of our research studies at the OARDC Western Ag Research Station. These are Xtend beans, dicamba resistant beans, and this was a study designed to look at different approaches to mare's tail management, which of course remains one of our uh, top weed problems. Um, there's a bunch of issues with both the Enlist and the Xtend beans in terms of figuring out where the exact utility of 240 and dicamba are for certain weeds and what type of program you can come up with for some of our resistance situations where you don't necessarily have to use them post-emergence if you have issues with that in terms of being close to yards and, and orchards and things like that. So there's some different ways, especially for mare's tail, that you can manage these. So I'm gonna walk through these and kind of point out a few things. Um, uh, these are not optimized for every other weed species and I'll point out where we didn't have enough residual and things like that. So of course, one of the issues with Mare's tail is our glyphosate 240 burn down, especially if you don't do something in the fall, has a lot of variability. And this plot here actually had glyphosate 240 as a burn down on April 20th when the plants were an inch tall and two inches across, which illustrates the issue because these plants pretty much all survived that burn down. Um, and then coming back with just glyphosate. So um, that kind of shows you the, the nature of the problem and the problem that we're sort of try, trying to, uh, to solve, right? So that's that plot. Um, if you come into this next plot, this is, has a, a, a residual with it, a combination of uh, first rate and, and authority, and it still didn't ha ha help burn it down. The first rate in that product can give you a little bit of additional burn down activity, um, but you know, most of our mare's tails are resistant to both ALS inhibitors and glyphosate, so in this case, the fact that we had a residual didn't really matter that much because we still didn't burn it down uh, to begin with. So you see the issue here of glyphosate 2,4-D really still not working even with an ALS inhibitor. Um, you get into some different ways to use dicamba, um, and of course, one of the things that we, you know, we'll be talking about is now that we have those crops coming along and, and the ability to use 240 and dicamba, not to overuse those herbicides um, the way we've overused some other products, and also to have them in a complex enough program. And the goal of that is to, in addition to get decent control of weeds, to minimize our, you know, pushing our weed populations to become resistant. Um, to those as well. So if you look at the plot here, you know, one way to do this is to decide, okay, I either don't need a dicamba or 2,4-D pre and I can use it post or vice versa depending on what your major weed problem is. And of course our strategy in mare's tail right now in Roundup Ready Beans is burn it down, make sure you don't have any there when you start and have enough residual that you don't have to control it post emergence, right? And for a weed like giant ragweed, it kind of flips because giant ragweed, you have a very post century post-centric uh, program, you've got limited activity from residual herbicides, so you're gonna have to, if you have resistant issues there, you're gonna have to decide to use some dicamba or 240 post probably there if you're planting that type of soybean. So this plot here illustrates the first part approach where we had uh, Sharpen plus glyphosate as our burn down, which worked pretty well. Um, not, you know, that program by itself on big mare's tail has some variability in it still, and there's a few plants uh, down in here that it didn't get and they kind of regrew. But the burn down essentially worked okay, and then this was coming back with um, dicamba plus glyphosate to finish up what was left. And you do see some big skeletons in here, so the burn down wasn't perfectly perfect, and the and the dicamba came back. So in this case, we de-emphasized use of dicamba pre, still had a relatively effective burn down, and if it wasn't completely effective, you know we were coming back with a dicamba post-emergence to finish them off. And if you had both glyphosate resistant mare's tail and giant ragweed you were going after, this might be the strategy that you went with, right? Having to use the dicamba or the 240 post um, instead of pre. So that's certainly one approach. Um, that does maximize your potential for issues, possibly with off-target movement and things like that. You're basically saving the dicamba for the post. It's gonna be hotter. You know, you're gonna have more issues with being careful with application um, to avoid, um, you know, uh, off-target movement and things like that. It's just more critical, going to be more critical in, say, mid-June than it's going to be at the end of April, um, that type of situation. So, um, so the plot here, uh, 105 is glyphosate 2,4-D followed by dicamba and glyphosate. Um, and we saw how well the glyphosate 2,4-D worked down there, so you know there were a bunch of plants here at the time of the post and the clarity. In this case, the dicamba um, with the glyphosate did finish those off. There's a lot of big dead skeletons down in here and it's not an ideal approach to not have an effective, to have an effect, a burn down that really didn't work well and having to finish them all off post emergence, right? So that's not ideal. Um, the glyphosate sharpen type of approach probably was a little bit better there or doing a glyphosate sharpen 2,4-D or whatever or adding some metribuzin. But again, this type of, a, of approach 
might be the one that you go to if you're trying to control both glyphosate-resistant giant ragweed post-emergence and also go after mare's tail. So this plot is actually the uh, sharpened glyphosate burn down followed by just glyphosate. So what it does show you is that the plot we looked at back over there that um, where the glyphosate sharpened was followed by the dicamba treatment, you can see how much the dicamba really added to that. And in this case, I mean, again, it illustrates the issues of burning down mare's tail without a fall application that it can be an all bets all or off situation. Nothing is really perfect. In this case, because we didn't have dicamba in the post, you can see the plants left here essentially survived the burn down and we didn't have anything to come back and finish them off. But it gives you sort of a relative picture of, you know, how effective the dicamba was following the sharpen treatment. And then we start to flip philosophies. And one of the um, things that's really important to know, especially for mare's tail, is that, you know, there's a lot of utility of dicamba in the pre-plant burn down, especially if you haven't done something in the fall. And again, you know, our current approach in Roundup Ready and non-GMO beans is fall followed by a burn down that works with enough residual to carry you through the season. And you can certainly use that same approach in, in, the, in the extend soybeans. Um, our, we would still like to see a fall application, I think, but if you don't do a fall application, our experience is a dicamba glyphosate, and you could still add some 2,4-D in that case if you're a week ahead of planting, is an effective burn down. And then if you have enough residual, um, you won't have issues with later um, mare's tail. There's a bunch of grass and other stuff in this plot you can see that the post-emergence killed because we didn't have enough residual in with the, on grass with the upfront. But that's certainly the other approach, and you can see it worked well. There's essentially no mare's tail uh, in this plot. We had uh, enough uh, residual from the burn down and had the, had the dicamba in there that, um, that we came back with the glyphosate and it actually, um, there was enough burn down and residual there to, to carry that. So that's one approach where you're trying to avoid um, the, the late season issues, it's hot, you don't really want to have to spray dicamba post-emergence. This is the other approach where you're using it um, pre-emergence and maximizing its use there and de-emphasizing its use post-emergence. So this last plot here illustrates something that I think weed scientists and industry reps and a lot of people are concerned about that, you know, when we have go back to technology that's effective on some of our key weeds, whether it's a 2,4-D or dicamba, that we can take out some of the other herbicides we've been using, the residuals, for example, and go back to a more basic program. And I think over time, we hope everybody, have learned, everybody has learned that residual herbicides are important. It's important to have some diversity in your program, not just to rely on the dicamba or the 2,4-D or whatever. And of course, in this case, when we already have resistant weeds, if you're going to spray glyphosate 2,4-D or glyphosate dicamba twice, it's a dicamba and 2,4-D carrying all the load, right? So you're just going to drive your mare's tail or whatever to the next level of resistance. But um, in this case, you see we had glyphosate dicamba applied pre and then glyphosate dicamba applied post. Um, you know, and because we didn't have residual, you see a bunch of small weeds in there still. And of course, that's partly because we have 30 intro soybeans. Um, that basically was pretty effective on the mare's tail. There's a bunch down in here that are, um, you know, because we didn't have residual, we had a bunch of new ones come up. Um, and the dicamba is actually relatively effective on those. They're probably not going to do very much. And if there was a soybean canopy, they'd probably just lurk under there. But one of the things you certainly see here is a lot of weeds, and that means that when we applied uh, the post-emergence, we had a lot of selection pressure um, for those weeds. And, you know, that's the type of situation where you're, you're maximizing your potential for resistance. So the program that we would still advocate, you know, in the extend beans for mare's tail would be fall, you know, and then the next fall program, and then the next year decide maybe where your dicamba utility is maximized and decide to use it either pre or post. And if you go the former, you've got you know, glyphosate dicamba, glyphosate dicamba sharpen, glyphosate, you know, 2,4-D dicamba, things like that that you can apply coming back with your glyphosate or whatever post-emergence. You know, if you're going to do the opposite where you're going to emphasize use of the dicamba post and you've got, you know, things like sharpen glyphosate, sharpen 2,4-D glyphosate and et cetera, some of the things we recommend now. So you got some different approaches here and it sort of depends on the weed resistance issues that you have and what your specific situation is in terms of trying to minimize um, impact possibly on adjacent areas.